Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palanipan Manikam. In this video, we're going to see what happens inside your body when you fast. Let's dive deep into it. If you have been following my channel and if you think that you got something out of the channel, please consider donating to our non-profit organization called Aishwaryam Trust. We take care of hospice patients, neurological patients where they cannot even walk and talk. We give complete free 24-7 medical care. Please look at the link in the description. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to help us out. First point is we should understand that our body is not used for frequent eating. They're actually made up for starvation. Our ancestors actually starved for a long time and then had a feast and then starved again. So starvation and feast was repeatedly happening throughout their life and they never had a situation where they had frequent eating. Fortunately, they did not have Swiggy or Zomato delivering foods in bullock cart and that's why I've been recommending in this channel to maintain an intermittent fasting of at least 12 hours a day maybe from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. this is absolutely doable if you look at it you have eight hours of sleep already I'm asking only for four more hours which is almost equal to a span of time that the financial minister is delivering the budget speech so why should you fast for 12 hours you have to give your hormones the rest that it needs so that it can be fresh the next day and also when you go beyond 12 hours there is an increase in the growth hormone which is absolutely important for repair and new protein synthesis. This hormone is secreted by our pituitary gland which is a tiny teeny gland right in the brain and it helps to grow all our organs during childhood and maintains its renewal during adulthood as well including skin, intestine, liver. Growth hormone is so so critically important. In certain medical conditions actually we give artificial growth hormone to actually stimulate growth stimulate cells and sometimes people use it for anti-aging properties as well so fasting is a cheaper alternative version of stimulating growth hormone rather than an expensive version of artificial growth hormone injection it's like your grandmother knows only to use the green and red button on the phone but gets an iPhone as a gift let's say our last bite was 8 p.m. and you can extend your fast to the next day until 2 p.m. that will complete the 18 hour fasting window this is where the autophagy kicks in let me explain to you what this autophagy means if you have belly fat if you meet the criteria of waist circumference more than 80 centimeters in women and more than 90 centimeters in men it is very clear that you have been on a high carb diet before or your body has more carbs than it actually needs this carbohydrates actually combines with the existing proteins and starts damaging the proteins your body has the tendency to repair those damage and start generating new cells but only if you you let it fast and that's where the autophagy concept kicks in and you need to fast for 18 hours to get the process started and if you fast even more the execution is even higher so that the repair hormones get more time to repair the damaged cells if we don't give enough time what happens is the carbohydrates combines with the proteins damages it and it gets deposited in the heart causing heart disease in the pancreas causing diabetes in the skin causing aging and in the brain causing dementia. If you really notice people who have adopted longer periods of intermittent fasting, they actually look much younger. As soon as he heard this, my friend Sarana Kumar started intermittent fasting because he wanted to look younger, but he cannot withstand more than 12 hours and he was like, I don't care how I look, I'm going to eat. So let's say your last bite was 8 p.m. and then you were able to extend the fast by just drinking water up to 24 hours, up to 8 p.m. the next day. This is where your body completely uses up your stored glucose levels and starts breaking down the stored fat which is what we want to convert that fat into ketones which is, might be an energy fuel for us. Ketones are a wonderful source of energy and you don't need that much amount of ketones either. For example, if you need 100 grams of glucose for energy, all you need is 10 grams of ketones because it is very very powerful. So when our extra fat is broken down, the inflammation in the body goes down that decreases the risk of cancer, that decreases the risk of heart disease and that decreases the risk of diabetes as well. But more importantly, after 24 hours, 
suppose the gut gets significant rest which is absolutely important when the gut is rested it can come back with good quality hormones and the proportion of good bacteria and bad bacteria starts to change when there is rest to the gut if we keep torturing the gut with repeated eating what happens is bad bacteria proportion is higher than the good bacteria this is considered as our second brain so when bad bacteria is more it communicates with the first brain and starts to eat more by creating those cravings and that is the bottom line of obesity these days bad bacteria or like sleeper cells they will fade away if you don't order from swiggy when the body is exposed to fasting more than 24 hours that's where the key component of decrease the formation of precancerous cells happen as the inflammation is going down the repair hormones have lot more time to repair the damaged protein get rid of all the damaged proteins forms new protein so that you get new cells everywhere in the place where you actually need multiple basic studies are showing that intermittent fasting can be an effective tool in prevention of cancer even in patients who have been diagnosed with cancer the burden of the cancer cells are known to be decreased with with periodic prolonged fasting techniques if you extend the fasting to more than 48 hours then you actually stimulate your stem cells to produce any cells whatever you want whichever place that your body needs stem cells or cells that your body produces periodically to replace the damaged cells and the new cells will be formed based on what the body needs for example we are stressed out and the brain cells are exhausted the stem cells can actually form new cells in the brain because your body needs it when people do 72 hours of fasting and when we actually evaluate these patients, we actually see an increase in stem cell production, increase in their immune effect to a point that any autoimmune disease, the effect can also be decreased because the inflammation goes down on the whole. People will be surprised how can a patient can be fasting for 72 hours. You will be actually surprised that the hunger and the appetite significantly goes down after 18 to 24 hours. So periodic prolonged fasting is recommended but it has to be done under a very careful setting. All I am asking for is to start slowly with a 12 hour fasting and you can maximize slowly to 16 hours based on how your body reacts. So it is a lifelong process. It is not a sprint. It is a marathon. You need to include all the factors surrounding your lifestyle, your social environment situation and then decide what eating window or fasting window will be suitable for you. I'm not saying intermittent fasting is a holy grail. Intermittent fasting is a sustainable technique that many people can use in this rapidly paced environment to get all the advantages. Remember, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It takes at least 66 days to form a habit. So choose an eating window or a fasting window. Stick with that and then let me know how you do. Please write down in the comment section what eating window or fasting window that you are very comfortable with. Remember, one belly at a time. It is absolutely important. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.